Here we have another area between two curves. So we have the graph 6 minus x squared, and we have x squared plus 4. So x squared is a u, and if you have a minus x squared, that should be the upside down u, because it flips it. So x squared is a u, 6 minus x squared is upside down u. Of course, they're labeled, so just having the intuition helps. But you look at the labels here. This one is the upside down u, and this one is the u. So to set up this integral, first we're going to think about our bounds. These are the x values where they touch. So we have our lower x value, I would say, is negative 1. And our upper x value where they cross is a positive 1. And then I need to figure out which one's higher. So I would call this one the upper curve and this one the lower curve. And say for some reason I just can't tell which one's which. If I can't keep these u straight, which is okay, what you could do to figure out the higher one is to plug in an x value that's in between where they're crossing. So in between negative 1 and 1, I could plug in 0 to both functions and see which one's higher. So let's do that. So if we plug in 0, we would have 6 minus 0 squared here. The y value for that one is 6 on a number between where they cross. If I do that here, I would have 0 squared plus 4, which is going to be 0 plus 4, which is 4. So I end up with a higher y value here. So this must be my upper and a lower y value here. So this must be my lower. So again, if you can't tell which one's higher up, just plug in a value, an x value, that's between the x values where you cross. So that's why I chose 0. It was strictly because it was between negative 1 and 1. And you could choose any number in here. You could have chosen 0.5. And you'd see that this green curve is your upper curve. Anytime you plug in on this interval, that 6 minus x squared ends up being bigger than 0, than x squared plus 4. So we're going to use the 6 minus x squared as our upper curve minus our lower curve is x squared plus 4 on this interval. And then we need a dx in here. We need to always remember to distribute here. We want to subtract our whole lower curve. So we can do some side work. We end up with a minus x squared and a minus 4. So when we go to combine like terms, we have negative 1 to 1. So I'm not ready to integrate. I'm just setting it up. And I'm going to put it in order, so I'm going to do the x squareds first. So negative x squared minus x squared is going to give me a negative 2x squared. So there's my first thing accounted for. And then I have some constants. I end up with 6 minus 4, which is 2. And then I still have my dx in here. So I say order. That just means standard form. It's usually highest power to lowest power. Order doesn't matter. But now we're ready to integrate. Again, before you integrate, you should always check that you have the right upper and lower curve, that you're confident with that, that you chose the right x values, never y values, of where they intersect. And then once you're feeling confident and you have it all set up with a dx on the end, then you should integrate. So I'm going to add one, put it in the bottom, put it up top. Integral of 2 is 2x. And we're evaluating from negative 1 to 1, which means I'm going to plug in 1 first. So I have negative 2 thirds times 1 cubed plus 2 times 1. So you could use your calculator for that, or that's just 2 minus 2 thirds. Either way is fine. Minus, I'm going to plug in my lower bound, negative 2 thirds times negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1. So you plug in your upper bound, you end up with 2 minus 2 thirds you can plug that in your calculator, you should get 4 thirds. And you can hit math, enter, enter if you have a graph and calculator to make that 1.3 repeating into a fraction for you since it goes on forever. Minus, if I plug this in here, I end up with a positive 2 thirds and a minus 2, so it ends up being a negative 4 thirds. Or you end up with 1.3 repeating minus a negative 1.3 repeating. But when you subtract a negative, you end up adding it. So you really get. 4 thirds plus 4 thirds, which is 8 thirds. That's a totally acceptable final answer. I like making it into a decimal, though, just to check that it seems right. So either answer is fine, but that's the same thing as 2.6 repeating. And what I say by making sure it's right is I'm going to look at the picture of the graph. It looks like it's about 2 by 2 big. That's where it's stuck between. So it's stuck between an area of 4. 2 by 2 is 4. And it looks like it's taking up majority of 4. So it shouldn't be less than half of 4. So 2.6, about 3, almost. That seems like a pretty good 
area between the two curves. So I don't know the exact area by just looking at it, but that seems like a reasonable answer. I wouldn't want an answer like 16 or an answer of like 0.4 or something like that. And definitely not a negative answer. It's an answer that at most would be just slightly less than four because we don't have four full boxes filled in with the area between these two curves. So that seems right and we're all set.